Hi, my name is Pastor Ron of Kozor, and I'd like to invite you and welcome you to this show of Crossing Past Television. And I would like to also say this, if you just have a few seconds, please dial in a friend and invite them to watch the show with us. Today is going to be an incredible show. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the founder of Crossing Past Television, Donald Reed. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> you know, Crossing Past Television Ministry is located in Hermitage, Pennsylvania. And Joyce, my wife and myself, I, I founded this ministry like 40 some years ago. And we've been on national television now for uh, about two years. Uh, thank God through Cornerstone out of uh, Wall, Pennsylvania. And we do have a uh, bring in local people. And if you're out there and you want to have your son or daughter or your one qualification, believe me, people, and that's John 3, 3 and 1 Peter 1, 23. And if you don't know what that is, look up in the Bible and find out what that's all about. Am I right, John? Yeah, right. Absolutely. You, I mean, you're that's a pro, pro football about. player. You weren't saved either, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, oh. We just talked with John Kolb last week, and we was talking about if you... You know, if you lose, if you lose your life, you'll find it, and that's what it's all about. Yes. it's all about Jesus. Yes, yes. You know, and uh, we try to bring in variety. Yes, well, Corey Masson today, Corwin Masson is with us today, and Corwin, I've known you and your family and so forth over the past years, all right? Yes. And uh, I know you're not afraid to share the Lord Jesus. Christ. No, I'm not. And uh, where were you born and raised? And tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, born and raised in Mercer, Pennsylvania. Raised on a farm. Uh, born in 1952, and uh, it was a great life on the farm. And I, I was just sharing the other day with somebody about I didn't realize how poor we were, you know. Come Christmas time, I'd only get one gift. My grandkids now, they got umpteen million gifts underneath the tree, you know. But uh, it was a great life living on the farm. And graduated from Mercer in 71, went to Utah State, and uh, came home and started working. And uh, before, uh, let me just let me back up a minute. Uh, in 1972, uh, I started to take the steps to become a Mormon. And uh, I, I came home, and my best friend that I'd run cross country with in high school started calling me, Glenn Orlowski. And he wanted to share this opportunity with me. And it had to do with Jesus Christ. And at that time, that was about the time the Jesus movement was started. And I, he kept bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. And finally, I said, okay, Glenn, come talk to me. So he came over and he, he started sharing about Jesus. And I looked at him and I said, are you one of them Jesus freaks? And he said, oh, no. He says, I'm just a follower of Jesus Christ. I said, oh, you're one of them Jesus freaks. <laughs> but he would not give up on me. And at that time, the barn ministry started with Pastor Jim Irv. And uh, so I ended up going over there just to get them off my back. And that was in August of 1973. I got saved. And uh, not saying it's been a bed of roses all that time, you know, ever since. But we've had, a, I've had my ups and downs. Uh, but God has been so faithful and uh, blessed my family and me beyond means. It's just, it's unbelievable what he's done. Went back to school, went back to Utah State. Uh, walking down the university center, and this guy come walk. He's, he's coming toward me, and I, I see him. He's like got stringy hair and a jean jacket on, and has Jesus loves me, Jesus saved, God saves, and all this, you know. And he walks right up to me. I'd only been saved maybe about a month, and he handed me a flyer for Campus Crusade for Christ, and he says, "You look like you were just a new born again, spirit filled <laughs> Christian." I, I looked at him, and I'm like, "How do you know?" <laughs> You know, he just knew it, and he handed me that flyer, and he says, come visit us Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, Sky Room, Campus Crusade for Christ. And that's why, to this day, I support Dennis Rainey, mm. a family life today, in Campus Crusade, because if it Powerful wasn't for ministry. Campus Crusade, I wouldn't be here. Mm. They, it, it was unbelievable. Came home, uh, started working in, uh, uh, for a tractor dealership, met my wife in 1976, I knew her before that because she had dated Glenn Orlowski for a little while. And, uh, got to, and we got married May 14, 1977, 38 years ago. A little more. Mm. It's coming up on 39 years. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a good ride. You know, well, you know were you, were, I, I missed a little bit there, but were you raised in a Christian family? or? Uh, yes, Presbyterian. All right. 
Uh, my mom went to church. My dad was Catholic. My dad never went to church. Well, I rebelled when I turned 16. I went to church up until I was 16. We went to Trinity Presbyterian Church there in Mercer. And uh, one day when I got my license, I wanted to spend time with my girlfriend. So I decided I'm not going to church anymore. And my mom says, you have to go to church. And I said, why do I have to go to church? Dad doesn't go to church, mm -hmm. you know. And I was the black sheep of the family. I was, I, I rebelled. And uh, I never got into trouble or anything like that. I just didn't go to church. In my mom's eyes, I was rebellious because I didn't go to church. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I never went to church until I got saved again. Now, you mentioned earlier, you said about, you know, that uh, it's, the ride's not been easy and you haven't been perfect. And I think a lot of Christians need to know the simple fact that, you know, Christians aren't perfect. They're just forgiven. Absolutely. So, so our life is about those, it's a journey. You know, it's just not like all of a sudden we've arrived. Right. And some people think, oh, well, Christians get there and all of a sudden as everything's perfect, but it's not that way. No, it isn't. When we got married in 77 and, and I worked at a tractor dealership and then uh, at a tire shop and then I went into the mill and worked at the mill. And in 1981, I got laid off. And for the next five or six years, I didn't have a steady job. I was looking back over our taxes, because Don did our taxes back in the middle 80s there. And the one year, we had a taxable well, income. He did the... Moses' taxes. He's been around so long. <laughs> done, that's why I call him Moses. He did that's Moses' right. taxes. And uh, our taxable <laughs> income was like $800 <laughs> one year, you know. And I'll never forget that. I'll just share this. We were having a tough time. We were struggling financially. And you were Christian then. And I was a Christian. See? And we were struggling financially, and uh, we were blessed to have bought a place, and the man that we bought it off of, the man of Norman that we bought it off, were Christians, mm. and they said, put food on your table. Don't worry about, you know, mm. making a house. Pay the interest. So we paid the interest. I was able to always have enough. God always blesses with enough money to pay the Amen. interest. Amen. Yep. But in, it, it was in 1984, uh, the skate moor in New Wilmington there across from the cheese, used to be the skate moor, now it's a cheese plant. Sandy Coken, I don't know if you know Sandy yeah. Coken or not. Yeah. It was his daughter's birthday party, and I'm sitting there next to Sandy, and he goes, and we're talking, and all of a sudden he puts his hand on my shoulder and he says, Corey, I think God has a word for you. Mm. I'm like, okay. It was like he just started to lay my life mm. out in front of me. Yes. He says, you're, you feel guilty because mm. you're not tithing. I said, you're mm. right. He said, God's not concerned about how much you give. He's concerned about your heart. And he says, you have to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. And he says, he's not concerned about how much you give. Just give. Mm. Pick a number. Pick a number. Whether it's a quarter, 50 cents, or dollar. Give it faithfully every week. And he says, when you give it, you laugh. Mm -hmm. You laugh at the devil and say, I'm giving this in honor of God. Mm -hmm. So I picked the number. And my gosh, I, uh, just shortly after that, I got called back to the mill. And then uh, a couple years later, I started my business. Uh, I had an asphalt maintenance business, started that. And then in 1989, I got the job with Atlas Energy. And ever since then, it's just been. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, uh, this is how God has blessed us. I just closed a deal on our family farm homestead yesterday with my brother and sister, and I was able to, you know, pay cash mm. for it and own it free and clear and not, it, it, you know, over the years. And, and I just, every time I got a raise or every time I got a bonus or whatever, I just, mm. I kept seeding, you know. And uh, so before you were tithing, that's when you had the financial problems. But after you started tithing, then, then God started to bless you more and more and more. Yeah. So there's biblical principles in here that we're supposed to live by as Christians. And you're right in that, God, it's about your heart. That's right. And if you truly love God, then you'll do what his word says. Absolutely. And even Jesus said, yes, give the tithe. But it's more than that. You know what I mean? You don't just honor him with your lips and with your actions. You honor him with your heart and what you do. I mean, your actions are important, you know, what you're doing. But right. is your heart in it as well? Or do yeah. You really, you know. You got it. So. it, it it's all about the heart. And that's what I, that's what I tell people. 
uh, you know, Christ is interested in your heart. Jesus mm -hmm. is interested in your heart. And our pastor uh, preached a message on uh, your name, what your name means. And I'd never really, Corwin is a family name, goes back to 1628 when, uh, when two brothers came over from England. And Corwin means friend of the heart. Mm. And man, when I saw that, I go, wow, that's just, you know, I'm, uh, I like to serve people. I'm, I'm a member of the Lions Club. Uh, I've been involved in Boy Scouts for years, uh, close to 30 years I've been involved in the Boy Scouts. Mm. And, you know, to have some of my Eagle Scouts or some of my Scouts come back and share that how uh, I've blessed them and how I've impacted their lives, you know, uh, through the years, it's just, I'm concerned about their heart you know, where they are. And Jesus said, come follow me. You know, he didn't say come follow Ron or, or Don or Mark. That's he right. said, come follow me and my teachings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about Presbyterians, Catholics, Methodists or whatever. It's about following Jesus Christ. You know, you, you must have escaped maybe the drug scene or you weren't involved in drugs as you grew up. Was you able to get by that? No, I, I never took drugs. Yeah. I drank for a little bit. I never drank excessively, you know, it was just yeah. more pleasure. I, was an, I ran cross country and track. I was an athlete. And uh, my coach today, uh, Jim Waldorf, was my high school cross country coach. And he goes to our church today, and we're, we're, we're like brothers. It's, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> my whole cross country team got saved from high wow. school. Every that's one neat. of them, they're all saved. You know what? That's the nice part of it is that I remember I said last week, before you go out witnessing, you better be a witness. Absolutely. Right. You mean two fingers out, three back, right? That's right. And you mentioned something about I know you joked about Moses, me, and taxes and all that, but let me tell you <laughs> something. Let me tell you something. In my business, which you know, I took care of your books or whatever, and a lot right. of people out there, and Mark, you know, we've talked about this. We have, tithing is good, you know. When you're born again, it'll it'll just like breathing, it'll just come, right? You don't even think about it. You don't right. even put the ten percent. Everything quote. that he asks you to do, you just want to do it you're because do, you love. You, you know the, the tax that Jesus' time was twenty three percent. Twenty three percent, I can show you in the scriptures, was twenty three percent. Truth me, it's supposed to be ten for the uh, t church and ten for the priests and so forth, and three right. and a half percent really was for. I'm just telling you, but today we have and doing tax returns, we have people. They're tied in their income, which is good, but some of them will not touch their principal. They got millions and millions of dollars laying there that is going to go to their families, and the families will just blow that out of the proportion. I've done it. I've dealt with the states and the wheels and try it. And it hurts my soul to see that some of them will not. So tithing is okay. In fact, tithing and offering. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So we as believers, and you, and we can't scare people away. Because when I went to church, I uh, as a Methodist, I wasn't saved. I they started out with past the thing. I'd have a five dollar bill. By the time I got here, I was a dollar. I was a little bit, you know. I put the five back away and put mm -hmm. in a dollar. But I'm just telling you, we have to get the gospel out. Absolutely. And the only way we can get the gospel out is by help, whether through crossing paths, through your ministry. You know, he's a pastor now, and he and he speaks all over the country, like since we crossed paths, right? So I think it's a very interesting time today that people are finally seeing and they got to see it through you you better live it right that's right we're ambassadors you you just said you led a man to the lord on the job or we did a show last week or something on the scene right or something wasn't it you led him to the lord or somebody like that yeah yeah just someone who saw one of the shows i was able to relate to it and wanted to change their life and and start serving Jesus, yeah. And, and you lo you own a construction company, right? Yeah, I have a, a concrete pumping company. And yeah. when you first came to me, you were behind the camera, right? You're yeah. my co-host now, right? Right. You didn't tithe your income then, did you? Uh, you know, I probably did, did actually. You? Yeah, I, I, but not like I do now. Not not as I, I do more than that now, you know. Uh -huh. Because uh, I, I understand what it is now. It's it's to show God um, where your heart's at. To give to give money to the things of God is actually to open the door for God to bless you. Right. You know, you right. never outgive God. Everything that, he, every, everything that he has in here for us to do is for our benefit, not his benefit. Right. You know, he needs nothing. 
Um, so whenever you start, you get in this walk with him and you understand what he asked us to do, you realize, wow, all this is good. All this is for us. All of this is so that he can grow me and he can use me for, for his purposes, for, for the things that he created me to do, to advance his kingdom. And there's such joy and peace in it, you know? I think what's beautiful about this, Corey, Corey you opened this up about the tithe, but what's a beautiful thing about this is we're, we're not taking up an offering. I mean, what I mean by that is a lot of people in the church just think their pastor talks to them because they want, he, or he wants their money or he wants an offering. What we're trying to share with you today is a secret of the kingdom right. that, that opens up a window of heaven for you. There's no way you outgive give God. So I don't know where you're going to church, and I'm not asking you to tithe to my church, but uh, we're asking you to tithe. Why? Because Crossing Paths, the, the, the organization, the ministry, wants what's best for you. If, if, first of all, that's knowing Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Amen. But, Amen. but secondly is you got to abide by what the Word says. That's right. Amen. And God wants the best for you. So first of all, know Jesus. And secondly, cut open uh, your purse, purse strings and give a little. Well, I think, too, along with tithing is you kind of have to be in tune with God. When God speaks to you about giving, mm. you give. You know, typical example here, I'm involved in our church in a media ministry. We go out and we do streets, we do skits, it's drama. And we needed microphones. And I'm, I'm, I'm driving down to uh, the drama practice one Thursday night. And we'd been hashing this over and the Lord just spoke to me and he says, you know, you got a little extra money over here. I was saving it for something else, you know. And he says, uh -huh. your ministry needs microphones. And I'm going, okay, Lord. <laughs> I wanted to use that for some else, and I went and and, and Joyce Hilo, she is our uh, uh, leader of our ministry. I, I walked in and I said, Joyce, I said, God just spoke to me, and she says, What about? And I says, I want to buy the microphones, and mm. she just broke down and cried, and I says, It's not mm. me, it's God, you no. know. I, it, it's just so we purchased four microphones and and uh, a uh, mixer. I forget what all you, I'm not a tech yeah, person, yeah, yeah. but it's it's pretty cool. Now we can go out and we have the microphones. Yeah, we see, can, it's building the kingdom. Absolutely. Right? And we went to the projects here in Newcastle, up, uh, up on, it'd be the west side, I guess, up toward Walmart there. Yeah. We had, we had over 40 kids there, little kids there, mm. and probably about 20 adults. Seven adults got saved and about 14, 12, wow. 12 or 14 kids. Gave their lives to the Lord. Where's, it, your, where's your church at? Uh, where's Victory the, Christian Center in New Wilmington. All right, so you go. You're going clear over there. Yes. To do the gospel. Yes. And isn't that what? Isn't that what it's supposed to do? You have a food ministry, yeah, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And how many people you food feed? So, right? Whoever's hungry. Who's ever hungry? Hmm. You know, I, I don't know. We got an awful lot in tithing and so forth. You know, right. but I want to know one thing. When you first got saved, a lot of times, how many people, brothers and sisters do you have? I have one brother, one sister. All right. Did, were they saved before you or after you? They know, that, well, they know of God. I don't believe that they're All right, born we, again. Right, we can, we can pray for them. And, and we know, Absolutely, you know, I pray we, for them We know the day. Bible said, Matthew, some of them one judge, not least you be judged, and so forth, right? And you're right. planting the seed, right? But sometime when you get saved, you don't, you're, you've got a whole new bunch of friends. Oh, absolutely. My, my in-laws have been a, a big impact in my life. And, and you talk about a witness, now those two, were a witness to me, you know. They they not only talked, they walked. They 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 walk it. And your wife went to Israel with me. She right? went to Israel, and, and you know she really hadn't told me too much about that <laughs> trip yet. <laughs> I, we every once in a while when we cross, she works a lot, and and uh, she's pretty busy, and I'm busy, but we cross paths. We'll sit down, we'll talk for a few minutes. But it, uh, she was real blessed to go with you, Don. Oh, she was well, real blessed. We had, when Mary went with us, Mary's yeah. been there before, but that was the first time with us. And like I said, uh, maybe I'll go again. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm only 84, so. <laughs> You've already done, like, what, your five last times you're going? <laughs> it's my last time. Yeah. Last time. But, well, know, Joyce just told me the yeah. next time you go, I have to go. She wants me to go to Russia with her. Boy, she, mm. she's, a, yep, she's persuasive, <laughs> uh, whatever you want to call that word. I have to watch out, you know. Yeah. But you know what? That's what Crossing Paths is all about. We're right. sitting here, we're talking, having mm. fun, joy, you know. I met this dude here, you know, and 
Uh, we've had some fun, you know. Amen. John Kolb last week really confirmed what I said about you guys on golfing. Mm. You can't count over three, He right? said it. Twice he said it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Par is four. <laughs> <laughs> they can't count after four. Because <laughs> I, I heard something about them being a lineman. Is that what it was? The, the lineman yeah, can't, line count, can't count past three. Yeah, yeah, the lineman right. can't count. Because I know he went out of bounds twice and he was on the green and he had a four. I could never figure that out. <laughs> but irregardless... Regardless, you got to have fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I believe in that. I mean, the Bible says laughter is medicine for the heart. Amen. Yes. It says out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts. We know that, right? Yeah. And when I got my heart right and you got your heart right, it's just a matter. It's a growth process, too, by the way, out there, people. Don't worry about this thing that, well, what if I sin after I get saved? So for, so what? You are a Christian under construction. We Amen? live in a fallen world. you got the great carpenter. Yeah. Right? That's right. When you build a house, they start here, they do they start there, right? You mean a pastor, right? That's right. So we know that when, when when we get these people together, we don't know who God is sending Joyce. We get phone calls all over the country now. And people want to be on crossing paths. And I'm and, and Joyce God. knows it and I will announce it publicly. I just got my script written in California for a movie of my life. And if you go on the internet, it'll be on there. What the name of it? They got the two movie actors, or what are all set up. The budget's a million and a half. You know what I'm doing? Nothing. I'm just going to tell you what nobody's talking about in this country today. And I'm going to take time right now. Is compulsive gambling. There's over 10 million compulsive gamblers in the United States of America. Would you believe people are still there's gamblers that will go down to Sears and buy a refrigerator and sell it to their friend for a hundred dollars and they'll get a thousand dollar refrigerator to run down to the local racetrack? Stories like that. And it's catching up. Mm. Now it's internet gambling and nobody wants to but it's a demonic spirit. It is. God's delivered me. I am no longer a compulsive gambler. I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer an adulterer. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. grace. And I'm not Amen. ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. I'm sitting here as 41 years. I've been saved, born again, spirit-filled, raring to go. I've never shut up. Moses is nothing, as you say. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to, my wife and I, we, at our age, we should be in Florida having a good time. But you know what? No, you shouldn't. I'm be. here. We had Mark Kaufman that turned around and, and donated this man. Uh, everybody in the studio, they ought to say hello to him before you go. They call our, uh, I was ready to retire. You know that. Mm -hmm. Ready to give you the ministry. And uh, what happened? This man called me and he said, uh, look, he says, uh, we want to bless a ministry. And they chose Crossing Pass from Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and donated us to use this building free. Come on, let's give Mark Kaufman a hand, people. Yeah. This is what he's listening to the Lord. And we'd be going to do scenes of the movie here in Newcastle and so forth. See, I never thought that would come about. I never did. And I never thought I would meet with you. And you were Catholic. You got saved. And you were born again. You know, you are you got baptized in the Holy Spirit and so forth, right? Yeah, it's been and, amazing getting to, amazing, to know see? the Lord better. So yeah. when I close this program, it's not that I'm ever going to beg for money. I never will. I never have. I was ready to quit, and I'm telling you this, I've said this to a man who walked in my house two years ago, Joyce knows, December 22nd, and gave me a check for $25,000 and said, I want you to go nationwide. People, let's give the Lord a hand for that. My Amen. Goodness. And that's why we're at. And that's a big step to continue on after that. And that's what we're doing now. Ron Coast helps me out every once in a while. Uh, my co-host here now, he's, a, he's in business. He's, he's tithing his income. I want to tell you something, people. We're not talking about tithing. We're not talking about the no. past. I want to talk about the future. Where are you going? Do you know Jesus? You say, well, I go to church. Beautiful. I've been water baptized. Good. You get on a dry lower, you come up a wet lower. That's not going to save you. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. That's right. It's the cross of Jesus Christ Amen. that saved me, took my sins and threw it out in the ocean in the sea of forgetfulness. And I'm forgiven for past, present, and the future. But it doesn't give me a right to sin. But if I do, 1 John 1, 9 says, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me for my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh, isn't that, that's a good deal for a gambler or yep. you out there. Say this prayer with me out there. Two people, I'm telling you what, I don't mean it, but I'm just, somehow the Lord wants me to tell you somebody. There's a family out there right now that is messed up. My family was messed up. 
My wife got saved first, my first wife, and died from Lou Gehrig, but I still believed. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is real. Hallelujah. He's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner right now. By faith, I receive you into my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Died on the cross for me personally, and rose from the grave, ascended to heaven, and intercedes for me. Say, Lord, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And if you're a Christian today, is this what you've done for God? There's nothing on that. It's a blank page. That's right. Have you told somebody about Jesus? Here's what you should do. God's going to reward you. You all know you're not going to get saved by rewards. No way. It's by grace. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. None of your own, least any man should boast. It is a gift of God. Take that gift today. Whoever you are there, a drunk, gambler, alcoholic, homosexual, I don't care who you are, God loves you. Telephone number 724 981 7777. 1 855 981 9777. God loves you. Call that number right now. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airway. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.